Hello, trumpet players. In this video, we're going to talk about the only time it's okay to practice a lot. You know, I've seen this in my studio literally hundreds of times. I'm not even making that up. Students will go to master classes, they'll go, they'll watch a video, and the famous great trumpet players, and, and this is not a, a slight to them, the famous players will say, when someone says, how do I become a successful trumpet player? They'll say, you have to practice a lot. And that is the culture, right? The culture. Um, there's that famous saying, someone's on, looking for Carnegie Hall, and, and they stop and say, hey, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And the guy says, practice, 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 right? And that's really a very superficial, the way people look at that, the way people interpret that, instruction often tends to be extremely superficial and people will say okay I need to practice a lot to be a great trumpet player therefore I'm going to now practice a lot and this ends up being the worst thing they could ever do and 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 in line with their enthusiasm, whatever, whatever degree of enthusiasm they have, that's how bad the damage is. Because, you know, the, the people who get this wrong, the more enthusiastic they are, the more unlikely they are to recognize the warning signs that you're really screwing up. Okay? So... And, and yes, the, the one thing that comes out of this habit, I mean, what, the one thing that comes out of this um, arbitrary just practicing a lot so that you become a great player is bad habits, horrible habits. In fact, oftentimes career-ending habits. And you know, the way, the, the way it's presented, and, and some of this is due to the fault of educators who can't play. A lot of this, and, and, and I'm, once again, I'm not slighting them. They have a role to play in all of this too. But, you know, you have to apply wisdom too and understand that what you say to the students can be interpreted different ways, right, by them. And now, if you're one of those that thinks that that is how you um, become a great player, then you need to continue watching this video and we'll straighten that out, right? But it's as if, you know what? It's as if there is an 11th commandment and that 11th commandment says, thou shalt practice a lot. And if you don't do this, you know, you've heard me say before, I don't believe in worshiping the trumpet God. I don't believe in, in, in treating music like it's a religion. And, but a lot of people actually operate that way. And this would be one of those commandments that the music worshipers try to teach, try to follow, is that you have to do a lot of practice if you ever want to be successful. And just speaking from a logical perspective, it's just not true. Okay, I'm not saying that if you practice a lot. So here's the way it works. Yes, successful people practice a lot, some of them, right? But there are literally thousands of trumpet players out there who practice a lot, who are not successful. In fact, I would say probably a thousand to every successful. For every successful trumpet player there is that practices a lot, and sounds great, 
there's probably a thousand people who practice a lot and sound terrible. It's not the time that you spend, right? You know, I, I like to compare this, you know, saying that practicing a lot makes you a great player is like saying that putting more gasoline or petrol, depending on who, who, what continent you're on, putting more gasoline in your car makes you go faster. That's the same kind of reasoning, and it's just not true. That's not how you go faster. It has how much fuel is in your tank. It's not what determines how fast your car goes. And in fact, now that I just said that out loud, sometimes more fuel in your tank is going to make you go slower because of the weight of the car. That's an interesting aspect of the analogy. Huh. Hadn't thought about that till now. All right. So here's what I want you to consider. You should never practice just to practice. That's the bottom line. You should never practice just to practice. You know, if, and the reason why is because if you, if you practice just to practice, if you're just trying to fill time so that you could be a great player, if that's your approach, you don't have any purpose. You don't have any direction. You know, and, and here's the thing. The tasks that it takes for us to be great players, and I'm not talking about mediocre players, I'm not talking about, remember that when I'm talking to you, I'm assuming you want to be a great player. So I'm talking to you as if that's what you want. I don't do, notice I don't do tips and tricks, right? You don't see any tips and tricks videos on my channel. You don't see shortcut videos on my channel. Okay? So I'm talking to you as if you want to be the best trumpet player you can be. All right? So the tasks that you have to do to be a great player are hindered by a panicky, rushed, um, unsettled practice environment. And if what you're trying to do is squeeze in a little bit more time, you're most likely damaging the effects, lessening the effects of those tasks that you should be doing. And this is actually even more true for trumpet players because the more time you spend on the horn, the more the physical stuff starts to kick in. And you know, a lot of you want to play high and stuff like that. And, and really, if, if you combine those two, the desire to play high and the, and the desire to just fill your time, fill, fill your day with practice time, you put those two together, that's disastrous. It's disastrous because both of those will damage your playing. Okay, so what is the one time that it's okay to practice? A lot. That's when you have a deadline. So think of it this way. <clears throat> For each thing, and, and, and we're going to talk in a little bit about... Um, Proven practice techniques, okay? Um, for each thing that you want to accomplish on the trumpet, let's say, and I like to use Allstate, Texas Allstate for high school students. That's a great analogy because the, the time for that is set. The audition date is set. The music comes out at a specific time, and then you have this much time to learn it. And it's almost impossible, unless you're just a really awesome trumpet player, which is possible. But if you're not an awesome trumpet player, it's almost impossible to make Texas Allstate without practicing a lot. Because the tasks that you need to do to pull that off 
cannot be accomplished, especially during marching band. Those tasks cannot be accomplished in the time that you have in a casual manner. You won't finish your tasks. So what you have to do to, to, to meet that deadline is increase how much time you practice every day so you get more of those tasks done on a daily basis, putting you closer and closer to your goal. That is the only time it's okay to practice a lot. You know, my wife talks about the danger of putting out fires. You know, in, in our daily life, the problem with putting out fires, so basically, um, if you can imagine this, you have a fire over here and you, 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 go, you get the pail of water and you put the fire out and then as soon as that fire is out, you see over here another fire and you have to run and get the pail and put that fire out. And this one fire after another fire after another fire. And what this does is it prevents you, because you're so busy putting out fires, it prevents you from preventing fires. There has to be time invested into, now this is a metaphor, right? There has to be time invested into putting out fires. And this is something that you apply to your daily life. And you know my rule, we don't, we don't talk about that in our lesson or in these videos. But just know that that rule can be now applied to your trumpet life as well. So, and this is how most of you operate. And this whole thing, trying to fill time, ends up being, in and of itself, one of those fires. As you need to get your time in for the day. Which is a totally superficial, arbitrary notion. That time that you spend does very little for you in comparison to the time that you would spend, if, even if it was a lot less time. But if you have a lot less time where you're actually focusing on tasks that get, need to be done, and doing them, here's the trick, doing them well. Doing them well. If you do that for a little bit of time, that's worth so much more than practicing a lot with no purpose. Okay? So, you know, one of the, one of the ways, one of the, um, one way that I like to explain this, right? Because this, this might not make sense to you. Okay, so how can what I'm saying even be possible, especially when culturally, uh, as a musical culture that we come from, actually preaches this, thou shalt practice a lot. Our culture actually says that as musicians, right? Our culture is set up to worship that trumpet god with our daily um, commitment to this piece of metal, right? I'm pointing at my horn, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, one thing you need to understand is how the trumpet works. If you don't understand how the trumpet works, what I'm saying here may not make any sense because this is not as athletic as a lot of people think. That's not as... Um, tangible as people like to think okay it's not nearly as tangible as learning f on a piano Bing, right you just hit the f now there might be intricacies about piano that i don't know about but when it comes to learning how to play the instrument everything is right there in front of you you can see it all you can feel it all right for us that's not true so let's take a look real quick how the trumpet works you 
create an, a vibration in your lips. That's the music. The music comes from your lips. The fingerings don't change your, your, the, the, the notes. Your lips change the notes. This is a very important point to keep in, in mind, right? Then, when you, when you vibrate that note, you have to now coordinate the trumpet's tubing so that it resonates at that frequency. Right? And, you know, that's, that's actually pretty darn uh, impossible if you think about it. Right? Especially when you add it to a musical context and when you consider that changes in tone um, and changes in style and stuff like that require these micro movements, micro adjustments. Right? So to play, to do what I'm talking about, where your, your, your lips are actually what create the music. Well, actually your mind creates the music. But, but it, the, the, the sound is created with the lips. And, and the trick of playing the trumpet is coordinating the instrument, using your, your, the valves, using the slides, so that that tubing lines up with the frequency that you're buzzing. We're talking cray supercomputer kind of processing. And the, and, and the problem with that is that your, your conscious mind can't handle that. You can't do that by thinking about it. It has to come from the back of your mind, from your subconscious mind. The automatic part of your mind. And, you know, we talk about because so, so your, your mind is like a computer, especially that subconscious part. You know how people, they want to get in the car and, and turn the key. They don't want to know how the car works. There's a lot of people like that. I'm not one of them, but there's a lot of people like that. And same thing with computers. They don't want to know how the computer works. They just want to turn it on, do their email, surf the web. They don't want to know all that stuff that's going on underneath, right? Well, that's how the subconscious mind works, right? It has a mind of its own, <laughs> right? <laughs> it does its own thing. And what we do to train the subconscious mind is to, um, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. You know, we talk about, when we, when, when we talk about computer, we talk about, there's an old saying, garbage in, garbage out, right? The, the mind is exactly the same way. The, the, the subconscious mind, if you train habits and, and musical activities like that into your subconscious mind with flaws, it is impossible, no matter how much Willpower you exercise over what you're doing. It is impossible to play without flaws in your performance. Garbage in, garbage out. This is a simple truth. And now, so we're talking about that on the macro level, right? Now let's look at the micro level. Let's talk about stuff like getting a good tone. If you really think about what it takes physically and mentally to get a great sound, it's daunting. Like I said earlier, it's like cray supercomputer type of stuff going on in your head. And it's, this is especially true if you're someone who plays different styles and has to have a different tone for this and a different tone for that. Wow! The stuff your mind has to do. And if the way you practice hinders that process, you've got problems. And I'm going to, I promise you, if the way you practice hinders that process and you're practicing a lot, you're doing more harm than good. It would actually be better for you to not practice at all. 
Did I actually say that? Yes, I did. Blasphemy, blasphemy. <laughs> All right. It would be better for you if you are one of those people that practices in a way that hinders that mental process. It would be better for you to not practice at all. You would get better results on your trumpet, in your music, if you didn't practice at all. Because the damage you're doing to that mental process with the garbage in, garbage out, sometimes that can't even be fixed. And when it, for, for depending on how, so this is where the whole irony of being ambitious comes in, right? If you were so ambitious that you didn't listen to the warning signs and you kept pushing and you kept pushing and you kept pushing and kept putting more and more garbage, trumpet garbage, into your subconscious mind, pounding it in there, and, and thinking that, okay, so it's getting worse, it's getting worse, let me do more. <laughs> right? If that's how you practiced, you might have ended your own trumpet career by practicing a lot. You know, people have been practicing for hundreds of years now. It's not something that you need to just try to figure out. You don't have to just try to play the music right. I have a video about that, you know, it's called The Worst, well it was specifically for Allstate, I should make another one that's not Allstate related, right? It's called The Worst Way to Practice Your Allstate Music, and that worst way is to just try to get it right. And you know what's funny, I've been interviewing trumpet players for decades. I've been interview ca casual, informal interviews. When I meet a new trumpet player, and if there's time to talk about it, I ask them, how do you practice? And 99 times out of 10, 90% of the time, they say, oh, well, I just try to get the music right. I just try to get it right. That is the worst way to practice. It's a wonder. So, you know, I think sometimes th those guys end up being successful sometimes in spite of that because they don't actually practice that much. That's that irony that I'm talking about. And that when I say you would be better off not practicing at all, I'm not being sarcastic. That's not sarcasm. I think, so, it, you know, if you need to put time in and you don't know how to practice, it would be better for you to just goof off on your horn. I'm serious. This is, I'm not being sarcastic. It would be better for you to just goof off on your horn. Play around. Do whatever you feel like doing. Than to try to practice and just try to get it right. So that's where the techniques come in, right? People have been been practicing for hundreds of years. There's a, there's an art to practicing. I even have, you know, I have a book coming out where I talk about how to practice a piece of music. It ended up being over 100 pages. I didn't want it, I wanted it to be more like a, a pamphlet, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, I guess I have a lot to learn about um, project planning, huh? But I kept writing and writing, and I'm like, there's more detail here and more detail here. But this is over 100 pages. It's a nine, nine by six, six by nine book. <clears throat> over 100 pages of information about the best way to learn how to practice a piece of music. And I'm taking techniques. So, and, and that's what I want to say is that, you know, Let's take a look again at the example of Allstate, right? You have a set amount of time. And with my student, if you were my student, I would st lay in front of you a series of tasks that you have to complete. 
Those tasks cannot be completed if you don't practice a lot. Right? So that's the, getting back to the point, right? That's the only time it's okay to do that. Because you have, a, you have something you need to do. Now, some, I guess I didn't, there's one part that I missed. I got it out of order. I don't know why I didn't put it on my notes. Okay. So I'm kind of jumping around. I, I do encourage you to read the blog. I'll put a link to the blog underneath. Um, so when I was talking about how the, the psychological stuff works, right? I forgot to say that the best practice you can do to improve your trumpet skills is calm, uh, slow, calm, and deliberate. And then I add also organized because you can't be those three without being organized. You, the best, I'm going to say it again, the best practice you can do, and this is where the, the overly eager people get in trouble. The overly eager people are like that, that um, grim fairy tale. I think it's a grim fairy tale about the frog that went into, squeezed into a hole, ate and ate and ate, maybe it was a mouse or something, squeezed into the hole, ate, 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 got really, really big and couldn't get back out, right? That's what it is to be overly ambitious. There's another one about the monkeys, and this is actually a true story. There's monkeys, you know, in, in Africa, the monkeys devastate c crops, so they have to catch them. Right? So there's a trick that they do with some of the monkeys that they put a piece of fruit in a jar. And that jar has to be like anchored down. And the monkeys put their hand in the jar to grab it. But the neck of the jar isn't wide enough for them to pull their hand back out. And they won't let go of the fruit. And that's how they get caught by the farmers. They won't let go. That's a, that's a great metaphor for this what over ambition does to you it's not just trumpet playing but you know we just talk about trumpet playing here but all these concepts that i share with you can be applied to, to real life all right so when you have proven practice techniques you have a sequence of steps that have to be accomplished Now, the best way to approach those steps is calm, slow, and deliberate, and then you're going to be organized. That's what the, the organized part is the, the, is the proven practice technique part, okay? And when you practice that way, you can practice a lot, and it won't ruin you, okay? But if you practice a lot and you don't have, you're not practicing slow, you're not practicing um, calmly, you're not practicing deliberately. What does deliberate mean in this context? You know what you're going to do and you do it. You know what you're going to do and you do it. You don't just like haphazardly do stuff to fill time. You have a plan. You have an approach. Okay? So that's what it takes. And you can, you can spend a little bit of time practicing that way and, and get huge results compared to the guy that practices a lot and does not practice that way. So that's what I want you to keep in mind here, okay? This is, this is a huge deal. And, and I'm not going to tell you what prompted me to do this, uh, this video. But this is something that I confront a lot. I see it a lot in my, my teaching, okay? Anyway, if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Other than that, God bless you. And we'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. 
I wanted to spend just a minute to let you know that there's a better, more convenient, more organized way to access all of these videos. We have literally hundreds of videos here on YouTube and, and quite frankly, it's, it's a bit of a mess. So to make it a little bit more organized and easier for you to access what you want to access, I created a separate page, a separate area on my website, that's eddielewis.com. And if you go to eddielewis.com, click on the menu, click on videos. It will take you there. I have the videos categorized. And then within those categories, some of them, like the, the educational videos, you can click on it and go in there and look for the videos specifically that you're looking for. Okay? So go to eddielewis.com, E-D-D-I-E-L-E-W-I-S.com. Thank you very much. <laughs>